To many of us, the term Wi-Fi is reminiscent of the old hi-fi term, meaning high fidelity audio. But actually the Wi-Fi term doesn't mean anything officially, according to the Wi-Fi Alliance itself. It's just one of those terms that has caught on and been adopted by both the public and the technology industry. Essentially, it's a wireless network device that's based on the IEEE 802.11 set of standards, of which there are several. Today we find Wi-Fi technology in a huge array of consumer electronics, including laptops, smartphones, video games consoles, printers and other peripherals and handheld devices. Since Wi-Fi has become synonymous with the 802.11 standard, we often use the term loosely for any wireless device, in much the same way that many of us call our vacuum cleaner a Hoover, which is actually a brand name. Care must be taken with the term though, as it is a registered trademark of the Wi-Fi Alliance, a global non-profit association of companies that provides a Wi-Fi certified endorsement when a product is tested to meet certain standards and criteria. Of course, not all 802.11 devices are Wi-Fi certified, and this doesn't mean that they're incompatible with other 802.11 devices or there's anything wrong with them, it just means that they haven't gone through the rather costly certification process. Many of us associate Wi-Fi with hotspots in cafes and restaurants, a wireless access point whereby we can connect to the internet to enhance the use of our laptop, PDA, phone, MP3 player or handheld video game. In and around London as an example, there are also mesh networks, created by many overlapping Wi-Fi access point communities. Sometimes the access is provided free and other time it's charged for. We see many hotels and airports providing free Wi-Fi as an advertised feature to entice us to use their facilities. Wireless networking in the home has also become far more prevalent now, with many internet service providers like BT providing wireless routers as standard on certain packages. BT have taken this one step further by providing routers that also function as BT open zone access points, effectively turning the entire country into one huge Wi-Fi mesh network. Wi-Fi has also made it possible to access the internet or networks from places that you wouldn't normally be able to. Kitchens, garages, garden sheds and even the bathroom all spring to mind for the keen web surfer. Many people who work from home can enjoy the summer sun in their garden or conservatory whilst emailing a spreadsheet to their office or clients, so the social effect of this technology is quite pronounced too. We're also seeing a huge uptake in business as well. Multiple Wi-Fi access points have become the norm in many corporate environments, providing multiple redundancy, faster data access, full roaming capabilities and an increased network capacity for more users. Because there are no cables, hard to access places can be networked easily, such as outdoors and historical or protected buildings. Installation costs can also often be reduced. New voice application protocols enable calls and voice communication without a traditional phone call. Since 2007, a full Wi-Fi installation is now capable of providing a secure network gateway, DHCP server, firewall and intrusion detection system. It's come a long way very quickly. Because of the global Wi-Fi certified program, any standard Wi-Fi device will work anywhere in the world, despite competing brands and technologies. It's a truly global set of standards, unlike mobile phones for instance, which have multiple standards and transmission bands. It's currently estimated that Wi-Fi access is available through nearly a quarter of a million public hotspots, not to mention the tens of millions of homes and many corporate and educational sites worldwide. By their very nature, Wi-Fi networks have a limited communications range, since the signal is affected by anything that blocks it. You'll get a wider range outside or in an open plan office than you would through the walls, for instance. An average wireless router with a stock antenna will probably achieve an effective range of around 30 meters indoors or 90 meters outdoors. The new 802.11n standard can more than double that range, but a further range often comes with slower access speeds due to more dropouts and errors in transmission.
For wireless security, the currently recommended WPA2 is considered secure enough, as long as a strong key is used. The more common and older WEP is quite easy to hack now, even when it's set up properly. The chief issue with wireless security is how much simpler it is to access a network and divert the signal as compared to a hardwired network. If an unencrypted wireless network is available, then an immediate access point is created. There are still many businesses today that use unencrypted networks, relying on their ability to stop a hacker's initial access. The CWNA, or Certified Wireless Network Administrator, is considered by many to be one of the best vendor-neutral starter programs. For students new to the field of IT, you would typically start with the CompTIA A+ Plus and Network Plus to ensure a full understanding of basic networking prior to specialising in wireless technologies. Since 2009, the new CompTIA Network Plus syllabus also covers basic wireless networking and provides the ideal bridge to the CWNA. Following CWNA certification, there are additional exams available throughout the CWNP programme and various vendor-based certifications from Cisco and others. Why not download our free information pack and IT certification ebook today for more information? Just click on one of the free guide buttons anywhere on our website.